We're coming to you live on tape again from the Lake Superior Railroad Museum in the depot in downtown Duluth. Closed to the public but open to you through these series of one-a-day videos cut fresh each and every day. A different subject, a different topic, some things dealing with artifacts that are in the museum, other times just some great train stories. And man, have we had some wonderful comments. That's why we're in the RPO car today. I want to share with you some of the comments we've had from almost every state in the Union, Canada, and even one from the United Kingdom the other day. People are loving these series and we appreciate your feedback very much. Be sure to put I want to win in your comment because each day we're giving away a free one-year membership to the Lake Superior Railroad Museum as our gift to you. Your gift to us might be going to our website and signing up as a member for yourself if you're not lucky enough to win. And then of course that helps the museum all year round when you're becoming a member. The other thing you can do, and this is very important, is just hit that share button. Send this video to a neighbor, a friend, or that grouchy old guy down on the corner that still hasn't shoveled his walk from winter. Whatever the case may be, share this video because that really does help us a lot. Let's take a look in the mailbag, see what some of the comments are that we've uh, had from people. Now these, as I say, come in every day and we really do appreciate it. This one comes from a mother who has a son with autism and he really enjoys trains. They come up here at least once or twice a year to visit the Railroad Museum, looking forward to when they can visit again. But in the meantime, she says, my son enjoys the videos each and every day. This one comes from our friend Terry Hill. Terry says, I want to win. A lot of memories in the Car Northland. He saw the Car Northland one. Uh, rode on the Car Northland several times while working for the DM&IR. Best memory was time Neil Armstrong, the astronaut, was on board and I got to talk with him and got his autograph. He was very nice. This next one comes from a Mr. Fargo. Uh, his first name is Wells. Wells Fargo writes, Ken, you're late again on your car payment. Oh, I remember why I got that one. Uh, this one, uh, speaking of cars, yes, here's a bit of this uh, Jennifer Walters writes, thank you for creating all these videos. They have all been both entertaining and informative and have become something I look forward to each day. Here's an idea for a future issue. I'd love to see more on that yellow station wagon inspection car. She's talking about the Erie Mining Company inspection car, the high rail. And you know, we're going to do just what you asked for, Jennifer, and we're going to take it right from the very beginning. First time on the rails. This would be your first example of a track inspection vehicle. Back in the uh, 1860s, these hand cars, pumped by hand, that's how they got their name. They were also called pump trolleys, or they were called jiggers. Uh, they were also called a pump car. All these hand cars, pump cars, jiggers, and hand trolleys, these were all made for track inspection, to get the men working on the railroad to where it was they needed to get the job done. These were nice once they got rolling. Getting them started or going uphill took a lot of effort. And of course, the brakes weren't all that good either. You just stepped on this right here, and hopefully it stopped in time. The next advancement in track inspection was the one-man velocipede. Now, the velocipede was a little better because you had two ways to make it move, both with your feet and with your hands. So you got a little bit more effort into it. And of course, it was a lot lighter weight than the hand pump car, so you could go faster with it. Its disadvantage was, of course, there was only room for one person, Maybe two, and you could share the work effort by moving down the track with two people in tandem. This was invented, by the way, in 1877 by a farmer from Michigan. His name was George Sheffield, and George had a problem. He needed to get from his farm into town, and the way he thought it would be easiest if he could figure out a way to do it on the railroad tracks. So he clandestinely invented the Sheffield hand car and used it to get in and out of town on the railroad tracks without their permission, usually under the cover of darkness. One day he was caught, and that of course let everybody know the secret of how he made it in and out of town so effortlessly, and the railroad got an idea and said, why don't you build one of those for us? In fact, build a couple. And the Sheffield Car Company was built and prospered for many, many years. One of several different companies that made the Velocipede back in the day. Eventually, they put motors on the hand cars so it would be easier than having human power instead of having horsepower to run them up and down the tracks. And then somebody got a better idea. Well, what if that hand car with a motor on it was actually a car with a motor that went on the rails? The Fairmont Motor Company of Fairmont, Minnesota came up with that idea. They called it the high rail. It was a way to make pickup trucks or any kind of vehicle adapt itself to ride on the rails. And this was one of those models. 
They took a Pontiac Chieftain, and this was the Safari issue from 1957, put on special adaptive wheels, and then of course it just went right on the railroad tracks. The rubber tires provided the motive power, and up and down the track in quite some luxury, I might add, in your own private inspection car. This one came from the Erie Mining Company up in Hoyt Lakes, Minnesota. That was a huge, big taconite plant in the 1950s. In 1957, they wanted something that was a little showier than just a hand car for their executives to tour the line on. So they bought this, the Pontiac Chieftain Safari. Top of the line for Pontiac in 1957, this model and similar ones to it were 58% of what Pontiac sold that year. And this was one of the last ones made. In 1958, they stopped making them all together, switched over to another model. But this had all the luxury. In fact, one of the first Chieftains had as its option was an at-home or in-car electric razor. <laughs> These things had everything. Of course, it had a two-way radio to communicate with the train crews, but it was pretty much luxury as you see it today. This was a way to travel. And travel they did. The railroad for the Erie Mining Company was 74 miles long. It went from Hoyt Lakes down to their docks in Taconite Harbor. And they had to get there pretty fast, so, well, I know what we'll do. I'll show you under the hood. This thing had a 347 under it. It was a V8. Actually, one of the first V8s ever made was in this production model. And there you see it. It's a 347, generates 290 horsepower, and you can imagine this thing went pretty fast down the tracks. Had a larger than normal radiator because the V8 engine was so big that it made a lot of heat. Back in those days they weren't as efficient as they are today. So you had the bigger radiator to keep the engine cool. This was a cool ride on the Iron Range. As luxurious as this ride was in 1957 on the Erie Railroad line in northern Minnesota, there was another guy 50 years earlier who had this all figured out. His name was Louis B. Hill. He was the third offspring of James J. and Mary Hill, and he became the dutiful son who actually ran the railroad in his father's latter years. Louis B. Hill, besides being a railroad entrepreneur like his father, was also very interested in motor cars. He liked Packards. He had Pierce Arrows, Buicks, Oldsmobiles, certainly not a Model T for Louis B. Hill. And he wanted to travel with his cars. He had his own private rail car, as all railroad barons do. His was A22, and he had A22 specially modified, as you can see in this drawing, so that it had a garage in it, a rolling garage for his entourage of cars. His Packard was the favorite, the 1907, and he would put it, roll it up into the back of the car, travel on the railroad wherever he wanted to go, and then he would roll the car out and travel some more by automobile. There are stories that he actually had one of his cars converted so it could ride on the rails, kind of like a high rail today, like the Erie mining car we looked at just moments ago. Louis B. Hill had some great ideas, and he put them all in this one car, including the special winch system to move the automobiles in and out of the garage at the back of the car. Louis B. Hill may have been the pioneer for today's high rails that you still see working the railroads today. We're going to work on a brand new episode tomorrow. In the meantime, remember, go to our website. Maybe join and become a member of the Lake Superior Railroad Museum. We'd love to have you. Also, the best thing you can do for us right now is hit that share button and send this off to a friend or neighbor and have them share in these wonderful stories we get to tell every day. In the meantime, I'm going to repeat it because it's so very, very important. Keep your social distance. Cover your mouth when you cough. If you're sick, stay home. Do not touch your face. And as always, let's take care of each other.